talking about the eternal God, Jesus Christ, the eternal God. Colossians, the book of Colossians, and the book of John. Colossians, the first chapter. Let's turn there for a moment. Colossians 1. Paulus Apostolus that Christ through is who the, the, the <laughs> no. I'm reading it in English, it's coming yeah. out in Greek. That's Greek <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Paulus Apostles, that's who's going by the Lamatos Theo to Theo. That's what it is in Greek. I was looking at it and seeing Greek. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the spiritual activating force of God, the Lamontos, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren, Christ, who are at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God, our Father. We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Jesus and love, which you have for all the saints, faith. That's what I'm going to bring to you today faith in God faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and who he is Paul was commending this church at Colossae for their faith in Christ in Christ and that's what I'm trying to do in these messages from systematic theology is build your faith up in Christ well let's go on because of the hope laid up for you in heaven which you've previously heard about in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you just as in all the world, also it is constantly being bearing fruit and increasingly, even as it has been doing in you also since the day you heard of it and understood the grace of God and truth. We come together as a church to worship God, no we? and to learn of Him. And I hope when you leave this assembly today that you will know and understand more about Jesus Christ than you did when you came this morning that is my hope and I hope that you can rest in Christ stronger than you ever rested in for and who he is in verses number 15 and he is the the icon of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation. That word firstborn actually should be the head of all creation. The head of all creation. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and upon the earth, visible and invisible, whether of thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. Who created all the angels and all the spirits? Jesus, Jehovah, the eternal God. All things have been created by him, through him, and for him, by the way it says. He is before all things, and in him all things are held together. He is also the head of the body and the church, and he is the beginning. Again, he is the head. He is the head. Not exactly the begin, not the beginning, but the head of all creation. He is a firstborn from the dead, so that he himself might come to have first place in everything. Now to go to John, the first chapter. Go back to the, to the gospel according to John, the first chapter. Let's look at this. Let's read it from the 
English first. I just can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> It makes too many mistakes. In the absolute beginning kept on being the Jehovah. And the Jehovah kept on being with God. Actually, proton theon, an inseparable part of God. And the Word became God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being by him. Apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being, that has become. No angels, no spirits, nothing. Ooh, the meal. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. Verse number 9. There was, in the, there was the true light, which command coming into the world enlightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, through him, and for him. And the world did not know him. The world did not want to know him. He came to his own people, nation, and those who were his own did not receive him. But as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, literally, and Jehovah became flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1 and verse 18. 17, go back. For of his fullness we have all received, and grace upon grace, grace stacked upon grace, mercy stacked upon mercy for the law was given through Moses grace and absolutely no shadow truth were realized and came into existence through Jesus Christ now it says here no man has seen God we might say this no man has seen the father okay at any time, the only begotten God, the one being in the bosom of the Father, that one has not explained him, but that one has led himself out. Genesis 3.15. Now let's go back and look at some of these things carefully, carefully. The writer says we approach the study of the person of Christ historically in yet another sense. First of all, note some things that show his true being in his pre-incarnate state. Pre-incarnate means what? Pre, before, in, in, carnate, that comes from the Latin, carnate, act of, before the act of being in flesh. Some of these things have already been mentioned under the Trinity, but they bear repeating, and some other things should be added here. In the eternal past, John 1.1. 1, 1. See there? We don't need to look at the book hardly, do we? Let's look at John 1.1. 1, 1. We read it a while ago. In our K ain't ho logos, kai ho logos. Ain't proston theon, kaiho logos, ain't theos, and you can do this either way, no matter. It can either be though God or God kept on being the Word, it doesn't matter. That's a predicate, predicate nominative, so it doesn't matter. In RK, in beginning, 
that's in eternity past when nothing existed except the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in union. I want you to understand that. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit existed in eternal union. There was never a Father without the Son and never a Son without the Spirit. They were all a triune God. They're all one there is one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is three, one. The eternal God. But in the annals of that eternal communion with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit decided that the Son would become flesh to redeem all of the creation back to him. Now why did God create angels? He said they're ministers. And also they are companions. Are angels triune? Yes. Do they have form? Are they clothed? Yes. Are spirits clothed? No. Spirits aren't clothed. So there are spirits and there are angels. And why did God create these? To, to witness the creation of all things. To witness. By the, by the testimony of two or three witnesses, let all things be established. How many, at least, how many do most theologians believe? How many, how many uh, what we call genae? are uh, manifestations of angels how many groups of angels are there three. three different groupings of angels triune again triune again <clears throat> there's Michael Gabriel and uh, Hillel which became known from the Latin Vulgate as Lucifer <clears throat> we configure and figure and guesstimate that uh, Lucifer is over the material realm corresponding to the Son of God okay we estimate and guesstimate and configure that Gabriel is over the informational realm like the Father And we guess, configure, that Michael is over the spiritual realm of God. And in the spiritual realm of God, of these angels, there are spirits in all of those three different spheres. I could write that on the blackboard. Triune, 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 all over the place, isn't it? Spirits here, Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. Material, mental, and spiritual. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Man. Body, soul, and mind. Body, soul, and spirit, that is. Now, we see all of this. The eternal God decided that he would create angels. And the eternal God, knowing all things, is he omniscient? that when he created all things to give all things volition now how could God ever <coughs> receive any glory from something that was a robot tell me I remember a movie a long time ago <coughs> when I was going to college and that they made this movie Cherry 2000 and this guy bought him a robot and he fell in love with her that ink stuff gets me. Really? 
alcohol or whatever it's in it. And she broke. And he went looking for parts for her, for another one. Because he was in love with this robot. He just did everything he wanted. He just loved her. And he went on a quest to find one. And he went through all kinds of terrible things. And he got this woman that was kind of like a bounty hunter or something to help him. She got him there. And in the meanwhile, he fell in love with her. She wasn't a robot. And he had never known love before. Wow. He didn't need Cherry 2000 anymore. <laughs> didn't need her. Had somebody loving him back that was real. Might not have been as pretty. Not, not been as perfect and, 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 and beautiful as the other one was, but she had volition and she liked him too. Now, love story. A weird love story, but a love story. Now, God could have created robots as superlapsarians believe. Okay? And how in the world could he ever possibly get any glory and love in return for that? He didn't create angels and spirits as robots. Because we know that at least one third of them fell, don't we? And decided not to follow him. And so God, in all of his omniscience, decided that he would become related to this creation so that he could redeem it back when, after he had created Hillel, he knew that Hillel would go astray. Now, did he create Lucifer imperfect? No. Does God create anything imperfect? Did he create a chaos and that out of chaos bring forth order? No. Who the me? Not at all. Not at all. He created perfection. And from that we see flaws come out sometimes because it has what? Volition. Angels, we know that at least two-thirds of them decide to follow God and two-thirds of the spirits. Maybe not all of them out of the material realm and the spiritual realm and the mental realm. We see evidence that some from the material realm are guardian angels that protect you in the material now. Okay? And that we have ministering spirits that protect you now. So not all of Michael's went astray, not all of Gabriel's went astray. And then we find out that people are communicating with the so-called spirits, evil spirits, demon spirits, and those are not God spirits, even though they claim them to be supernatural, divine spirits. What does the word demon mean, Marilyn? Demon. Demon, little God. Little God. They're, they're supernatural, aren't they? Angels are supernatural. So when we look at all of this, we see that God has a plan. And that plan is brought into existence through his son. <clears throat> now the son of God. The son of God would be subordinate to the father and to you at all reality. We talked about him becoming flesh and dwelling among us and the fragility of him on that cross of Calvary that he died much faster than he should have died because of the weight of our sins upon him. Let's look at John 1 and 1. And let's get exposed to that eternal God that became flesh and dwelt among mankind for us. In beginning... Third person singular and perfect and dignity. He kept on being. And now this word hologos is not the Greek word or idea, but what? Logos, the Greek, was that original idea. <clears throat> but it is Hadavar, which took the place. I didn't want to have to write this again with this stuff. <clears throat> Jehovah. That's 
the word Jehovah, which means he who shall become, that comes from this Hebrew word. <coughs> this word Jehovah, for Jehovah. Exodus 20, verse 7, Thou shalt not use the Lord thy God's name in vain, for he shall require it of you. You will pay for it. They never spoke the name Jehovah ever again. And the word Jehovah comes from this Greek word, or Hebrew word, on page 224 in Brown, Briar, and Briggs, and 243 in Kohler and Bumgarner. And it means to become. In beginning, kept on being the word, the Jehovah, the one who shall become. Every time you see that, say Jehovah, and say the one who shall become. The ha the bar. And the Jehovah kept on being proston theon. <clears throat> and I goofed there. I didn't goof the first time, I goofed the second time. Prost, page 346 in the Analytical Greek Lexicon. Tone, accuses the singular masculine, definite article, accuses the singular masculine noun. The word, nominally singular masculine, third person singular and perfect indicative active, that verb there. And uh, Jehovah, he kept on being toward the God. The only way I know how to explain this grammatically is that he kept on being inseparable from the Godhead. Did God taste death on the cross of Calvary in the Son? Yes. <clears throat> Pros ton theon. And now here we come to the predicate nominative. And I, I hope I'm not boring you to death with all this, but th th this is extremely paramentally important. Kai ho logos ain theos, or you can say kai theos ain ho logos. It doesn't matter which way you say it. Okay? Now let's look at this. That is a nominative singular masculine definite article. Sharon, am I telling the truth about that? Yeah, that's what it is. And the Omicron Sigma on the end of this word logos here, that's nominative singular masculine. Then you have a linking verb here, which is an equal sign. The Jehovah kept on being God. And right here, this is not a conjunction here. It's more like because or even, yes. A, a, a particle of affirmation, page 208. And I have a little Greek lexicon. Yes, even the Jehovah, he kept on being God. Now in Greek, you have a definite article and you don't have an indefinite article. What's an indefinite article? You know what that is, uh, Benson? It's not really uh, applying to a specific it's it's an indefinite article is an A or N. A N or A. That's an indefinite article. Could mean to anyone. There's no indefinite article in Greek. But here we have a this we have a sentence here, N R K A N Hologos. That's a sentence. Right there. That's a whole sentence. And it's linked together by conjunction. Kaiho logos ain prostontion, another sentence. One sentence, two sentences, now it's three sentences. And every one of these sentences are making a quite an elaborate statement. In RK, in beginning, in the absolute extremity of time, nothing else is beyond that. Only when the God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit commune forever together in eternity past. And the Word kept on being inseparably part of the Godhead. Is Jesus God? Did he ever cease being God? No. Now see, we're talking about the Trinity. And now we have the third sentence in John 1 and 1. Kai ho logos ain theos, or kai theos ain ho logos. It doesn't matter. Number, gender, and case, everything on this side is the same. One equals one. Is that true? Mathematically and grammatically, it is the same. 
let's say here, let's say chi, and this here means this is a particle of affirmation. Yes. Say yes. Yes. Or even. Mm -hmm. Look it up on page 208 if you want to. Whole logos. Nominee singular masculine definite article. Nominee singular masculine second declension noun. And this word whole logos there should be translated Jehovah. The Jehovah. He kept on being God. Did Jehovah ever cease being God? No. Now what does the word Jehovah mean? He who shall become. The one who shall become. Now let's look at it in every way. The predicate nominative. Theos ain't ho logos. Now there's a definite article here. Now your Jehovah Witness brethren, they say this is a God. An indefinite article. That indefinite article that they put in there is an absolute violation of grammar. And it's absolute blasphemy also. It's not only a, a, a violation of Greek grammar, but it is blasphemy. The Jehovah, he kept on being God. Now this is nominative singular masculine here in it. So this is nominative singular masculine, nominative singular masculine there, definite article. Now, without any violation of grammar at all, period, you can put whole theos right here too. Nothing wrong with that, is there? Because it's there. The Jehovah and the God are one and the same, are they not? See, I said, boy, I'll tell you what, I've taken the Jehovah Witnesses to task on this. You can't get away from it, Vincent. You can't get away from it. That tells you the person of God right there. This one, if you only had one verse in the Bible, in the Greek language, that's what was written in one of them. You could prove Jesus is Jehovah God with that one. And then in John 1 14 it says, Kaiho logo sarx again. And the Jehovah flesh he became and dwelt among us. <clears throat> Look at that. And the Jehovah flesh he became and dwelt among us, and we beheld. His glory, the glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1, 18 now. Again, remembering this. Hologos ain't hotheos. Or hotheos ain't hologos. We have the eternal God. We have in him not changing. God did not change when he became flesh. He became related to us in every way. <clears throat> no one has seen God, and we might say God the Father, because God the Father is invisible. John, or Colossians 1, that we just read a while ago, said what? It talked about Jesus being the icon, the pressed out image of the what? Of the invisible God. Do you accept that? It's true. We can understand that a little bit. No one has seen God the Father at any time. But the only begotten God, the one being inseparably in the bosom of God, like Prostone Theon, just like this. That's a statement of that. Paul took this statement and made it into his statement. I don't know whether the Gospel of John was written at that time, but I can guarantee you John was preaching this. And Jesus preached it. No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten God, the one being in the bosom of the Father. That word is on there. It's this. That's nominative, singular, masculine, present, participle, active. The one being in the bosom of the Father. And then it says again, that one, he has led himself out, or he became. And it's middle voice. He did it for himself. He did it for himself. 
Now we, we're going to skip on down here to the next page, page 287, because we covered this more thoroughly than the book did. We are repeatedly told that Christ had a part in creation. Thus, we read that God said in Genesis 1 and 3, the reference being to Christ as the word, John declares that all things were made through him, and without him was nothing that is made in John 1 and 3, which we read a while ago. And Paul says that through him all things were through, created through him in 1 Corinthians 8 and 6, and that in him all things are created and things are invisible, whether they're thrones or dominions or principalities or powers or all things have been created through him, by him and for him, literally. And he is before all things. He is the head of all things. And all things are held together through him in Colossians 1, 16 through 18. These scriptures represent Christ as what? Creator. Preserver. And the goal of creation. God in eternity past decided that God's son would become flesh. Now where did God get all the material that he brought it, that he created into when he spoke it into existence? Where did it come from? from him everything that we see in the universe came from God it existed out of him the visible things come from the invisible things that we cannot see but it all came out of God and he spoke it into existence and then when God created man where did man come from dirt no he came from the same elements as dirt Man is a creation, primary creation of God, not a secondary creation of God. Adam was a primary creation of God. He wasn't created from dust, but from as the dust was created. Man, page 582 in Brown, Driver, and Briggs. <laughs> you want to look that one up. We see God bringing all of these things to existence through him, by him and for him. Okay, this is beautiful. The goal of all creations, that God will bring all things back into harmony with himself through the merits of the person of Jesus Christ, period. Nothing has to do with you at all. It's through the merits of Jesus Christ. You're not going to get saved and then hold on to that salvation by your own volition but it's by the purpose and person and the power of God to some <clears throat> God was about to create man it says here Genesis 126 it says let us make man in our image how did Christ have part in that God said let us make man in our what? In our shadow casting likeness. And in our blood flowing likeness, that's the image of the sun. And in what? Our sovereign likeness. The image of the Father. Spirit, Son, and Father. Man is going to be made in that image. It says here that... Uh, Patterson thinks that the sphere of the special work of Christ was arrangement or the formation of all things in the greater life and work of Christ in his book. Although the second person of the triune God often appears in the Old Testament, he is never referred to as Christ there, is he? But he is referred to as a Hamashiach, the anointed one. Instead, we have the names Jehovah and Son and the angel of Jehovah. In Psalm 2 and 7, Jehovah calls him his son. More frequently, he is called Jehovah. He is called the rock that followed Israel, isn't he? And Jesus said, You are Peter, a little stone, but upon this gigantic foundation rock, Petra, I shall be building my church and the gates of hell shall not wrestle her down. 
And Jehovah rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from Jehovah out of heaven, Genesis 19, 24. Undoubtedly, this is the same one who is called Jehovah in Genesis 18, 13, 14, 17, 19, 20, 33. And again, but I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by their God, Jehovah. Hosea 1 and 7. And in Psalm 45 and 6, Jehovah calls him God. Most often he appears as the angel Jehovah. Strong says the term seems in the Old Testament with hardly more than a single exception to designate the pre-incarnate Jehovah. When you see the word logos, just say Jehovah because that's what it's talking about. Whose manifestation in angelic or human form foreshadowed his final coming in the flesh, John 1, 14. This single exception, strong notes in Haggai 1, 13. If we may assume this is a fact that we may have a number of interesting revelations of Christ in the Old Testament. As the angel of Jehovah, he appeared to Hagar. And what did Hagar call Je Jehovah? Jehovah, my shepherd. The first time, first one in the Old Testament that called Jehovah her shepherd. Jehovah Roe. <clears throat> and told her to return and submit herself to Sarah adding that he would greatly multiply her prosperity in Genesis 16, 7 through 14. And as such, he appeared to Abraham and stayed his hand when he was about to slay his son Isaac in Genesis 22, 11 through 18. And here we have again Jehovah Roe. The Lord was seen and the Lord provided. That word Roe means to both, to see and provide. And as the angel of Jehovah, he told Jacob that he would prosper him in the face of Laban, oh whitey, Laban means whitey, doesn't it? And oh whitey's unfair dealings with him in Genesis 31 and verse 11 and 13. To Moses, the angel of Jehovah appeared in the flame of a fire out of the bush and asked him not to draw near for the ground on which you walk is holy ground, Exodus 3, 2 through 5. Notice that Jehovah is called God. Then we read that the angel of Jehovah went before Israel when they left Egypt. Who passed over Egypt on the night of the slaying of the firstborn? The angel of destruction? No, not the destroying angel, but Jehovah. There is no destroying angel, by the way. It's Jehovah. <clears throat> Exodus 14 and 9, 23, 20, and 32, 34. Paul says the rock that followed them was Christ in 1 Corinthians 10 and 4. And Jesus again, Matthew 16 and 18. I was a rock. The church is built upon him, not Peter. And when Balaam came to Israel to curse Israel, the angel Jehovah intercepted him and instructed him to say only such things as he would speak to him. Numbers 22, 22 through 35. The angel Jehovah came to Gideon when he was secretly threshing wheat to hide from the Midianites. And he told him to go and deliver Israel, Judges 6, 11 through 23. And to Manoah his angel appeared and promised a son, whom his wife called Samson, Judges 13, 2 through 25. <clears throat> when David sinned in numbering the people, God sent an angel with pestilence. The angel is called the angel of Jehovah. Isn't that like what happened in Egypt? Mitzrayim, the place of red mud and canal banks, Mitzrayim. First Chronicles 21, 1 through 27. When Elijah fled before Jezebel, the angel of Jehovah came and refreshed him under the juniper tree in 1 Kings 19, 5 through 7. No doubt it was the same person that spoke to him at Horeb. In the days when Sennacherib invaded Judah, the angel of Jehovah came to the rescue of the distressed Jews and smote 185,000 Assyrians in one night. 2 Kings 19.35 In Zechariah 1.11 the angel of Jehovah stands among the myrtle trees and receives the reports of various messengers and in Zechariah 3 and 1 Joshua the high priest is represented as standing before the same angel. From all these scriptures we learn that Christ had a distinct personal existence during the Old Testament period. 
and that he had definite and repeated dealings with the race of man. What song do we have of invitation? 566. 566. Jesus is my Savior. Is he yours? Is Jesus your Savior? Is this great God, an eternal God that came forth, made of a woman, made under the law, just like Genesis 3.15 says, is that your Savior? message to you and to all the world that will hear it. I pray that it will build people up in, in the faith of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And that they will understand and realize more thoroughly how much he suffered for us. And what God gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Father, thank you for your Son. Thank you for what he did to me, what he did for all those that believe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.